Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're doing another ballistics test video and it's going to be with 380. Some of you guys probably know if you follow the channel that I like to carry the Glock 42, which is a 380 caliber pistol. I don't necessarily think the 380 is the best defensive carry load. It's one of those calibers that I kind of fall back to when I need to, but it's not my primary carry with my primary carry obviously being 9mm. But I do carry it. It's really handy. The guns are nice and small, and especially in the summer months, you can slip a little 380 pistol into a pocket. It just disappears. You can forget, for the most part, that you have a gun on you, unless, unfortunately, if you should need it. But when people ask me what round I carry in my 380, I usually tell them a ball round. The 380 with a good hollow point, when I say good, I mean effective, that rapidly expands, it can't really penetrate deep enough to be an effective caliber, in my opinion. I was recently made aware of a new 380 round called the Extreme Penetrator from Lehigh Defense. Lehigh also sells the bullets to other companies that load the ammunition commercially, like Underwood. The Lehigh Defense, the Extreme Penetrator, promises to penetrate as deeply as a ball round, but to increase the temporary and permanent wound cavity in the gel past what a normal ball round can do, so it can penetrate as deeply and do more soft tissue damage. And that's what we're out here to find out this afternoon, if it can actually do that. The two loads that we have, again, one from Lehigh Defense, and this one is a 90 grain projectile that goes 865 feet per second. The other one is from Underwood, which purchases the Lehigh Bullets, which again is a 90 grain projectile, but this one's doing 1,200 feet per second. We're going to shoot that, both of these rounds, and a PMC ball round as a base through some different test mediums, such as 22 gauge sheet metal, some wood, some drywall, and even some denim. So, let's get started. The first order of business was to establish the velocities for the 380 PMC ball ammo, Lehigh Defense 90 grain loads, and the slightly hotter Underwood ammo loads that feature the Lehigh Solid Copper 90 grain bullets. To kick off our testing, we're going to fire a 90 grain PMC ball round for our first test into bare 10% gelatin. Again, it's from Dr. Coat. We're not going to have any barriers in front of it. We just want to see what this ball round does in bare gelatin. We're going to do the same test with the Lehigh Defense bullets before we move over to the barriers. Let's start shooting. The PMC ball round performed pretty much as expected. It did clear the entire 16 inches of gel, entered here, exited here. We won't be able to recover the bullet because it did make it all the way through. But looking at the wound channel, the permanent wound cavity looks about to be about a half inch in diameter and it's pretty consistent throughout the travel all the way through the gelatin. So let's see how the Lehigh Defense bullet performs in the same gelatin. We're going to shoot a shot right over here. The Lehigh Defense bullet is CNC machined out of copper, it weighs 90 grains and it has a unique shape to it. You'll notice these scallops on the side of the bullet. I'm told that these are intended to re-divert the energy to the sides, which would work that, that soft tissue. It should extend the cavity, the temporary and permanent wound cavity throughout the length of the bullet's travel through the gel. We'll find that out here shortly. And the front of the bullet, the nose of the bullet, is flat, which presumably gives it the ability to penetrate barriers effectively. And it's in a cross shape. Looking at the wound channel from the Lehigh Defense bullet, it's really very interesting looking. It made a perfectly symmetrical corkscrew pattern through the gelatin. The wound channel, the permanent wound cavity that's left behind is definitely more pronounced than the ball round than what it left behind. I wouldn't say it's vastly superior in terms of size. It's more consistent and it's slightly larger in diameter. The Lehigh Defense bullet also cleared the 16 inches of gelatin, which is what I like to see. It definitely has the penetrating power in bare gelatin to, uh, to be what I would consider to be a good defensive cartridge. 
Since the first Lehigh round zipped through the single 16 inch block of gel, I placed a second block behind the first one so we could see how deeply the bullets penetrate. So I fired the second Lehigh defense 900 foot per second 90 grain projectile into the two gelatin blocks and it made it almost 27 inches into the gelatin. We're using the Glock 42. This is a tiny little handgun and 27 inches of penetration is impressive to say the least. Now I will say that the wound channel, it's not much bigger than the bullet itself, especially after it makes it into the second block. But I value penetration far more than I value something like this PDX-1 that makes a big splash in the first couple of inches but stops seven inches in. That's useless to me. That is impressive. Now I'm excited to see how the Lehigh Defense Bullet performs against various types of barriers like sheet metal and wood. Okay. Now we're going to move into shooting through some barriers. I'm going to move through this fairly quickly. We're going to shoot through some denim, going to shoot through sheet metal, going to shoot through wood, and if we get to it, we'll shoot through some drywall. I'm going to use both the Lehigh Defense Load and the Underwood Load. I'm going to fire two shots very quickly with the first shot being the Lehigh Defense and the second shot being the Underwood which clocked 200 feet per second faster. We're going to again move through the denim, through the sheet metal, through the wood and maybe through the drywall and see what that velocity difference does to the overall penetration through the different barriers. Fire. This is really good stuff. So we fired two rounds of the Lehigh Defense, the Underwood, and then the Lehigh loads themselves through this denim. You can see the two shots here. Fired them in rapid succession. The Lehigh, which is a slower one, hit here. The Underwood, which is a faster one, hit here. The Underwood, with its 200 foot per second advantage, made it about 21 and a half, actually take that back, 22 inches in. That's pretty impressive. The Lehigh Defense, 200 feet per second slower, made it 19 inches in. Now what's really impressive about the Underwood load, the slightly faster one, it's 10 inches into the gelatin, the permanent wound cavity is two inches across. It made a far more impressive wound cavity than the, the uh, slower round, very sim similar in design, but it's just bigger. That, uh, that, that permanent cavity is just more pronounced and much bigger. And again, its widest point, it's 10 inches in and two inches across. Now, by the time it made it into the second block, it had slowed down significantly and the wound channel is smaller than the diameter of the bullet itself. But that first 10 inches, it's dumping some energy and stretching that tissue. That's impressive. Let's see what else it can do. Shooting two more rounds, again with the Lehigh Defense and the Underwood ammo. Going to shoot the Lehigh first, the Underwood second, through 22 gauge sheet metal. Let's see how far it goes. One fire. Well, once again, I've been impressed by the Lehigh Defense Ammunition. Two shots through 22 gauge sheet metal. The first shot was the Lehigh. It hit right here, which is about an inch from the edge of the gelatin block. It came through at about 16, 17 inches in. It hooked left and exited the block, so we don't know how deeply it was going to penetrate. It had exited the second block before the first round we fired through the denim. Now, the Underwood ammo round hit over here traveled all the way in, actually went deeper than the previous Underwood round that went through the denim. So it looks like of the one round we can measure, just about 24 and a quarter inches in through sheet metal, 22 gauge sheet metal. That's really impressive performance out of that 380 slug. Next up, let's try some wood. We've switched out the gelatin blocks. We put two fresh blocks out and now we have a three quarter inch thick piece of pine. We're going to fire the Lehigh Defense and the Underwood ammo through this barrier and see how it performs. Fire!
Once again, the Lehigh Defense Ammunition has impressed me. Fired two rounds through the three quarter inches of pine. The Lehigh load made it about 17 and a half inches in and the Underwood ammunition load made it about 18 and a half inches in. Again, what's notable about that 200 foot per second advantage the Underwood load has over the Lehigh load is that about eight inches, nine inches in, that permanent wound cavity is an inch and three quarters. The Lehigh is probably about half that size. So that 200 foot per second advantage the Underwood ammo has is turning into a pretty substantial wound channel after going through the barrier that extends about nine and a half, almost 10 inches into the gelatin. Again, that's really good performance in my opinion out of a 380 round. For our last test, I'm gonna fire the same two loads through a half inch thick piece of drywall. Let's we'll see how it goes. One, fire. The performance through the drywall was very similar to what we had seen through the pine wood. The slightly hotter underwood made it just shy of 19 inches in, and the Lehigh defense load made it just shy of 17 inches. What's kind of cool though is the drywall, because it's a chalky type substance, the wound channels are really visible. Now what I will also say through this particular medium, this, this barrier, it looks as though the wound channels are very similar between the two. The underwood still has a slight advantage. It's still slightly larger than the Lehigh load because of its higher velocity, but it's, they're very comparable. But the, uh, the underwood definitely makes it uh, an inch and a half, two inches deeper in. So overall, very consistent performance through the different types of barriers that we fired into this afternoon. All the results are very good. Well guys, I have somebody here to help me this afternoon. This is John, you may know him as uh, Chaos 311 Clarity, but he's here as Patent Media. He's helping out with some of the testing we're doing this afternoon. He brought a really cool slow motion camera, which by now you've seen some of the uh, footage from that. Yep, so thanks yep. for bringing that out today, John. So what we're gonna do guys, is we're gonna cut these bullets out of the gelatin. He's gonna help me do this so we can speed it up. Gel can be kind of hard to cut through. Yes, it can, yeah. It can be a, quite a bear to get these projectiles out of here. I'm really interested to see what happens, man. You know, these, none of them look like they deformed no. at all. Mm -mm. which is you know so different than hollow points everybody talks about hollow points but right. these are not designed to change form at all when going through barriers yeah and that's why we're cutting them out right now is yeah. because we want to see how going through sheet metal and drywall and denim affected the overall you know de deformation of the bullet if it affected it at all yeah like you said is it doesn't appear that it's really done much to them let's just go ahead and start cutting some of these out and uh oh this does cut a lot cleaner than uh this is more like jello yep yep <laughs> I can actually get these out pretty quickly. This stuff is very, very similar to actual jello. Look at that. That is not. Dude, that looks like it could be reloaded. Other than the scoring from the rifling, I mean, these are just good to go. Ooh. Lock yourself. Don't hurt yourself now. Uh, start doing the tree trimmer slice here. You hungry? No, but it does look edible. It feels like gelatin, man, like actual. Jello, just put a little bit of food coloring and sugar in it. I am gonna stab myself. One yeah, thing you don't careful, know about man. me, John, is I cut myself every time I touch a knife. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there, there we go. Is no I'm getting in difference. there. I'm getting in there. Getting in deep. Oh, I'm, I'm being lazy. I got two more down here. Oh, here's the here's, here's the sheet one. metal. Look at that. Oh, that is cool, guys. We're gonna have to show you this. The sheet metal bonded itself perfectly to the tip of the bullet. We'll get a close up of that for you. Wow, that's, that's really, really cool. cool. <laughs> in stereo. Dude, this stuff is super easy to cut through. It's not like the silicon-based stuff I've used. All right. All right, there's the last one on my side. Okay, so I think what we can say, aside from the sheet metal that's bonded itself to the nose of this bullet, they, uh, even that one's not deformed at all. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of capped on there. It's really interesting. I mean, they, they all, to me, look pretty much identical. And like you said, yeah. you probably load them again if you were desperate. Really, yeah, I think you're right, man. That's, uh, that's really, really cool. Overall, I'm going to say... I like the performance of these bullets. Yeah. I mean, this makes a 380 a viable carry option for me. I'd feel very comfortable. I'm actually leaning towards the Underwood stuff. Sure, that, that sure. Slightly hotter stuff, about 200 foot per second advantage over the Lehigh defense loads. Uh, 
it makes actually a noticeable difference in these wound channels and the penetration and the performance is enough that you know it's comparable to a nine millimeter yeah and i mean it's it's really a completely different way of thinking yeah you, you know they they said we don't want to make another hollow point we want to do something that is is going to kind of change the game and as you guys can kind of see i, I mean it kind of has yeah that's, I, that's I, different. I didn't expect any of this this afternoon i honestly expected to come out here shoot some of this stuff and go eh. because if you guys follow the channel and watch some of the stuff i write in the blog you know, I'm not a real big fan of, you know, straight copper bullets or, you know, fancy high speed new rounds. They right. don't seem to perform. They always fall far short in the penetration category, yeah, yeah. which is what I value most when picking a defensive cartridge. Sure. This stuff is completely different. When you think of a copper projectile, I don't put this in the same classification as the other stuff that's out there. This stuff really works and uh, i didn't expect that i expected to walk away from this uh, test this afternoon thinking eh you know but i'm going to carry this stuff i'm actually going to put this in my little glock 42 this is my actual carry gun my wife has one as well this is what's going in our pistols that's pretty cool man yeah i think so that's good exciting. stuff well hey guys if you have any questions about anything you've seen in the video this afternoon you can ask those questions on our facebook page i'll put a link down below if you want to support the military arms channel the best way to do that is to shop at our online store copper custom please swing by and check it out we got a lot of cool stuff at really good prices and if you're not aware yet of full 30 i'll put a link to full 30 down below you'll know that from watching my most recent videos that i post my videos there early they'll show up at full 30 and a few days later they'll show up here on on youtube Thanks for coming out, man. It was good for you to Thanks for come out me, here brother. and visit us in Indiana. We got rid of some of the snow. Oh, it's beautiful out here, man. <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah, it's been a good day. Nice yeah. and warm. I appreciate you having me out, man. It's Thanks been a lot coming. of fun. Thanks for the slow motion. Thanks for watching, guys.